Welcome to ACCA APM past exam question go through and we are looking at the question called chain from the June 2023 question one alongside with my own written answer to the question. Now the key to pass the APM is to make sure that you write enough sentences so for example if you are given 10 marks of course you need to write at least 10 sentences but at the same time, if you're asked to evaluate or appraise something, what you need to do then is to tell the story. So, for example, what's currently happening within the business so that what is good, what is bad, and the implications of reasons such as using the words because. I'll show you how in a minute. Now, I will break this question down into several videos for different requirements and, of course, you will see that we will be using very standardized format to answer these type of questions that appearing in the actual exam. Because as you can see that for the requirement A, you're required to uh, write a report uh, about the performance reporting, 10 marks to comment on the reports that is given by the examiner. And of course, we will have our standardized format of how to answer these type of questions in each and every sitting exam. And then you're required to comment on what gets measured gets done. Of course, we will be using the same headings each and every time uh, in each of these exams, but we are going to be linking with the actual case information there. But what's more difficult is the part three, it's about the branch survey, you'll need to apply your business common sense from there and to make sure that you've done the calculations correctly to get these marks. And of course, always in the question one, for example, there will be uh, professional marks in there. And of course, from my perspective, the, the, the communication mark is very important, so you need to write out the report format. So for example, you can see in my answer that the report format, for example, that would be a report, and two from day subject, introduction, so uh, what I would do is that I would say that this report will assess performance report, copying the requirements, okay, from the, from the question requirement from there, and then followed by what gets measured gets done, and finally the branch survey, so that's it. So make sure that your introduction will cover all three requirements using uh, a single paragraph will be absolutely fine there. And of course, you need to lay out, for example, uh, regarding the requirement number one, regarding performance reporting, but you don't really have to say the number of marks next to that, okay? Just, uh, just do it for illustrative purposes. And then followed by an other heading regarding what gets measured gets done, okay, and so on and so forth, and finally give a conclusion of that. And of course, for other professional marks in the APM exam, so always bring the case information in your answer. Also, one of the very important exam techniques that you always bear in mind in the APM is that firstly, you need to raise your point of what is going on but followed by, yes, for example, because and so that, okay, it's this keyword, but what is more uh, easy to, uh, to be understood by students and to be learned by student is that currently what the case is happening. And this is why we need to change, yeah? So change so that the reasons behind it, uh, for example, you're using the words because, we love to see that from a marker's point of view, or so that, okay, by talking about the implications, or perhaps the risk of doing that. And even, you can always suggest what is going on. Of course, sometimes you may not get the technical marks regarding, for example, reasons and something like that, but you may be given, for example, the analysis and evaluation mark, A&E marks, by providing the balanced argument 
in your right. answer. For example, talking about the good thing and bad thing at the same time and so on. So this is why currently, yes, it's a very powerful tool and powerful word as well because it will force you to think about what currently happens within the business so some change that may be needed. Right, okay, so we are given these requirements, it seems to be quite general indeed, and we to tailor to this particular case. Uh, you need to change your mindset here because you're not a student any longer, but you are a consultant, and this is why that's very important. Now, now we are given the following exhibit to the left-hand side about the complete information background. It's called Chain One Drinks, and about the performance report in the final exhibit. And what gets measured gets done. Uh, it's a request for work on how this quote will apply at the company. And we are given the survey for our brand about the details of work relating to the brand awareness. So in other words, who knows our brand and brand loyalty. So this means that if customer A buys our product, the customer A will continue to buy our product. Uh, so which means it's loyal to the business. And of course, that when you're reading that uh, particular sentence, you need to force yourself to think about, so for example, that uh, when not, there might be subsequent changes in the selling price that may affect your buying decision later on. You're also given the appendix number one, is the illustrated performance report, and appendix number two is the extract of a consultant's report on survey results on the brand. You're given lots and lots of things there. So if you get the question one right, it's highly likely that you'll pass this paper with very, very high marks. Of course, the exam is the uh, computer-based exam, so which means that you need to click on the exhibit on the left-hand side and clicking on the requirements uh, I've just shown you before, and then you need to answer these requirements in full. So make sure that you will not miss any requirements in the actual exam. Okay, so in order to get the professional marks right. Right there, so let's read through the exhibit number one uh, and, uh, and so on before we answer the first requirement. So we are given the case is the unlisted company. I would say that it may be uh, a bit aggressive. Uh, so you can expand, I would say that further you can expand your business so you can increase your revenue potentially and finally get listed. I would say that expansion option may be one of our options, okay, in our pocket. And it's based on the, uh, it's based in a country called Dealands, which produces and sells uh, specialty teas and coffees. All right, so there are two aspects to the business, is the production and retail. So the production, it seems to me, is the supplier. Yes, we, we produce things. At the same time, we are the dealer, which means we sell uh, to the final customer. So it means that the business is like controlling the upside as well as the downside supply chains at the same time. Now, looking at the first part, in the production parts of the business, the teas and coffees are carefully sourced by procurement team. Now, when you're reading that particular sentence, you need to raise the question why and how. So how careful it is. You just say to yourself how careful it is. Don't read too fast in the actual exam and force yourself to think so how careful it is. I would say that if I were to buy something, I'd like to think about the price that I need to pay and the quantity which means uh, how many items that we need to buy each and every time so to enjoy the trade discount, something like that. At the same time, whether or not the quality will be okay, whether or not the supplier will be reliable. For example, we will be assessing the lead time, which means the waiting times that we order from the supplier each and every time from there. So you need to see whether or not these KPIs are available. I would say that unluckily they are not available and this is why we need to criticise the performance report later on. And we also told us that a package is either dry tea, leaves or coffee beans 
in uh, chains, uh, patented, resellable punches. Okay, I will say that, yeah, it will be fine that, but uh, these dry tea leaves or coffee beans, it seems to me that the shelf life, yeah, a bit long, and we may not need to care about, for example, the write down of inventories and something like that. The pouches, which have been through a three year development program, has been shown to retain the flavors of 50 percent longer than most commonly used forms of packaging. So I would say that 50 percent longer than other uh, production method. I would say that it's like the benchmarking exercise, yeah? But uh, the benchmarking exercise would say that we are comparing with the best. So I'm um, very interested to see later in our performance report whether or not the benchmarking exercise has been done but luckily this has not been done so you can also criticize that in your answer but it's only for 50 percent longer but uh, if you were to compare with the best one in the industry uh, so what would that be right so production part we've finished that now next continue our story in the retail part of the business, there's a chain of shops managed by the retail director. Okay, so we've got a chain of shops. So this means that, I like to use another colour, this means that we may be thinking about perhaps that it's based on different types of products that we need to manage. Alternatively, based on different areas that are more interested I'm more interested to see whether or not their performance are uh, good or bad. So you need to see a breakdown okay, of the uh, revenue and cost of sales so into different types of product or into different areas. Or perhaps into different shops. And these are located in large shopping malls. Okay, it seems to me that the rental fee a bit high. Now, uh, let me share with you my secret tip uh, when answering the APM question. I, I would say that if you see the marking scheme, that yes, we need certain headings to, to get the basic marks. However, a lot of students fail this paper. It's because they are uh, accused of dumping knowledge from the study test or test book or study notes that uh, wherever they are studying from. My secret tip here is that for each sentence, when you're reading that case, it, because you will have a scratch pad okay, on screen and you click on that, and then when each and every time you read each of, those, of your sentence, just make sure you do it like me, uh, what I'm currently doing, so copy that and paste that into the scratch pad and make a comment of that. So later on when you are answering the question in, and you can directly bring the uh, case information at the same time you're commenting and uh, so you will score really well because there will be a lot of subjective uh, judgment to be applied in this paper i.e. there will be no 100% uh, correct answer in most circumstances so make sure that you can use that approach. We're also told that in the shops there are this place of the pouched products for sale and each shop has a small cafe area where customers can enjoy the chain's product. I would say that this small cafe area where not they will supplement supplement our main product. I will see later on in our performance report, yes, we've got a cafe area as well. Moving on. Chain has a management team and VC or venture capitalist. So what do I mean by VC is that there will be the institutional investors. So, so usually they will be quite large to invest the money in, in, into a chain company. Uh, perhaps they are quite risky. Okay, so they are shareholders. Uh, so therefore, it supports my claim that Right, uh, they might be a bit aggressive later on to expand the businesses further. 
The VSA have provided additional capital needed to support the development of the pouches and also the expansion of the retail side. Okay, though. So this means that money is not an issue, perhaps because uh, we've got money or investment from the, uh, the, the, the input from the large shareholders. That's the first point. And the second point is that uh, how about the return to them? Because at this level, you always need to bear in mind that costs and benefits analysis would be, very, would be very important. But at the same time, the risk and return analysis will be also very important when you are dealing with stakeholders. There's no point in communicating with your stakeholders that the return will be quite high. However, it's the risk. Yeah, we ignore that, but there's no point in doing that. So always bear that in mind when you're answering the question. Bring those elements in your answer and to a, you are demonstrating very strong business acumen uh, knowledge from there. Now, next one then. The change strategies to maximise shareholders' wealth. Oh, OK. Now, maximise shareholders' wealth in the long term. Let's break that down. Firstly, that would be your primary objective. Yes, at this level, it's very important to so identify the objective. So you've got the critical success factors coming in, and then we've got the KPIs, or at this level, we are calling this as metrics to make sure that we are uh, measuring the most important part, because the missing of those, we cannot achieve our objective later on. The objective would be the shareholders' wealth. It seems that I'm wasting time in copying this stuff, but trust me, it will not be the case. If you are doing the same thing in your actual exam, it will save you later on lots of time when coming up with high-quality answers. At the same time, secondly, you notice the word is called long-term. Yeah, that's important. Because later on you will need to see whether or not there will be sub sub sufficient KPIs are in place in measuring the long-term stuff rather than focusing on the short-term. And by growing the sales of these products, which are high quality, okay, now you're showing that high quality will be another objective from there. So, for example, high quality. Um, how to assess whether or not the quality will be high? We need to see whether or not we input enough money into the research and development phase to improve our products continuously. But at the same time, we need to see the revenue from the repeated customers because the quality is not high, so the customer buying our products once and will not buy it again. Market share. Uh, and also, we need to see uh, the defect rate of our products potentially and to assess our, uh, the quality in terms of our production. So the quality will be built in across the entire value chain of our business. Not only that we are producing items that we emphasize the importance of quality, but also when we are buying things from the suppliers and then selling things to the final customer after sales service, HR, uh, human resources management, and, and also the uh, technological part, we also built in the quality measures in place from that. Right, uh, and which you can sell at a premium price. Right, now premium price, which means the high price, you always need to bear that in mind about the price elasticity of demand, or you can call it as PET. So this means that if your product's PET is greater than one, for example, uh, it would not be a wise choice to increase your selling price, otherwise there will be a larger drop in the sales volume and bringing down your overall sales revenue. So, of course, if your pet or price elasticity of demand is less than one because the, the brand is quite loyal and, is, and quite strong, it's easier for the business to increase the selling price a bit further so a little drop in the sales volume will not stop the total revenue to increase further. So this means that 
uh, you always need to bear that in mind. This exam that will be a next step. Okay, advising the management. Uh, so my mindset uh, that I always require my students to do in this paper is to always position yourself as a consultant rather than as a student. When you're reading every sentence, that you're finding it okay, every sentence will be quite useful and informative and uh, very, very useful for the clients to make future decisions and to treasure every sentence. Okay, so if you're having that ability, having that mindset, and highly likely that you can pass this paper. Next one then, the quality will be driven by innovation. Okay, so another objective that we need to bear that in mind, that innovation will be also very, very important there. Innovation in procurement, which means, okay, innovation when we are buying things, uh, I would say that perhaps we are sourcing things from different suppliers. And we need to be more innovative. How about demonstrating our, our commitment to the ESG initiative or uh, the environmental, social and governance perspectives and so on. Ah, also to production method. Uh, okay, for production method, it is not difficult to think about that innovation simply means that we need to upgrade our production uh, methodologies and machines and processes and so on. Well, the premium price will be achieved by is selling and marketing, right? Now, selling and marketing campaigns will be very important. So if I were you, I'd like to think about the selling and marketing expenses to divide this into the sales revenue and to see the percentage would not compare with the previous years and even benchmark against the best one in the industry where not is increasing, decreasing. Okay, now, that's important there. Of course, the selling and marketing campaigns, you can also think about how about the revenue from, a, from your existing customers. That may help. Okay, if uh, uh, I've to see that the uh, loyal customers are keep buying our product, that's good news. Okay, so... We need to see a lot of KPIs related to, the, to each of those. And of course, I would say that, let me highlight this. I would say that this will be very, very important because that relates to the part one of our requirement. We need to combine this with the performance report given by the examiner. Now, let's see the exhibit two. Given a small number and close involvement of the shareholders, the main method of reporting to them is an annual report. Okay, now, what do I mean by annual report? Annual report is just to be the financial statement, auditor's report, and reviews from the CEO and even chairman. Um, and of course, we, we will need to explain things further by bringing the accounting policies in, in our annual report. But what's the point though? Of course, reading the annual report, we can determine, for example, the dividend that we pay to both shareholders and also the future strategies. However, I would say that may, it may not be quite effective indeed if you are simply communicating with our major shareholders through the annual report. Because they may be arguing things that why not keep investing in certain areas to make sure that the capital gain will be huge rather than offering me the same amount of dividend, each, same amount of dividend each and every year. Now, uh, the change report is recently being criticised by the venture capitalists. Oh, okay, they're not happy. Although management is happy with the progress of the business, the CEO of the company spoken to the venture capitalists, who indicated that the failed report was ineffective in achieving the principal purpose. Now, what would be the principal purpose? I would say that it would be the shareholders' wealth in the long term. 
Now, in the long term, it's talking about the cash flows. So cash flows method, including the MPV, if economic value are the analysis, EVA, so it may be coming in. The CEO asks you to provide an assessment of how well the report reflects the strategy of the company. Okay, now, what would be our strategy? Our strategy, yes, there will be a lot of information from there. As you can see there, what would be the strategy? Yes, keywords popping up into our mindset. We've got innovation, we've got long term, we've got shareholders' wealth, yes. Uh, the innovation in terms of procurement and production method. Um, any sort of things, yes, we've got the upstream supply chains, downstream supply chains, and we all control all of them. And at the same time, that the pouches uh, to retain the flavours for more 50% longer than other competitors, why not to benchmark against the, uh, the best one in the industry? Right. What about other strategies? We are an unlisted company and we may be quite aggressive or we may need to be more aggressive in order to obtain a listed status very soon. I think this will be the strategies of this company. All right. Now, uh, let me show you. Let me show you with the final exhibit. Uh, Sorry, see, Exhibit 5, I would say. Not a final one, but uh, it's the Exhibit 5. Now, a lot of information coming in there, and this is the performance report showing the budget with the actual for this year. And then, when comparing the uh, budget with actual, as you can see there, so we have got the variance, okay, coming in. We've got the variance coming in. If I were to compare the budget with the actual, which means the difference from that. And also we've got the actual information from last year, which means X4, so this is last year. And we are given the growth year one year. So this means that we compare the 20x5 actual with the 20x4. So we simply use 20x5 minus 20x4 and divide this into 20x4 information. And we can see that the revenue for uh, the, our products and cafe has increased the revenue by 3.8% or 3.9%, uh, something like that. At the same time, yes, we have got profit as a percentage of revenue, but uh, I'm also interested to see, let's say, that what about our marketing expenses? Now, marketing expenses, uh, sales and marketing expenses, has been included into other operating costs. So I would like to uh, separate this out. So, for example, for the sales and marketing expenses, if I were to divide this into revenue, so it would give me the particular percentage. Okay, so costs account for how much of our revenue, but this is missing because uh, the missing of this particular KPI. We cannot really measure the performance of this company in terms of the effectiveness of our marketing and the uh, loyalty from our customers. And also, we are given the industry average. However, a lot of things are missing from there. So for example, in terms of revenue, so we are not given the total revenue from the industry average. How about the profit? We are not given in the industry average, okay, the gross profit. We are not given the gross profit margin from there. So it would be more sensible if you to say to the examiner that how about to benchmark this 
benchmark other figures with the perfect and the best competitor in the marketplace or benchmark against the particular function. So for example, the benchmarking exercise will not necessarily be to compare with our competitors, but revenue, yes, we can compare with uh, the company in a completely different industry, uh, but has a very similar business model uh, with our company. We can benchmark against that company and so on. And yes, we are given, so for example, other metrics, but we are not given any narratives at all. Narratives is missing. Okay. Now, how about for revenue? Has been broken down into chain products, but Within chain products, I would say that, how about the revenue? Uh, is it from different shops, areas, and not particularly sure? Why not break these down? Also cost of sales into chain products and other cafe sales. So uh, we're not particularly sure that we'd not see uh, the, I mean, different port lines are working with each other, which means selling and buying things from other port lines or from other areas. Uh, what would be the intergroup transactions, which means the transfer pricing, the internal revenue, and what would be the external revenue and so on. So we're not seeing those figures, but we are given the final figures, so for example, the total revenue and, 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 and the total cost of sales and giving me the gross profit. But reading back to the requirement one, that writer reports to respond to her instructions. So what would be the instructions from the exhibit two is to assess how well the report itself is not a company, how well the report reflects the strategy. Okay. Now, if Stephen's answer is talking about, well, this company is doing great, okay, and luckily, no marks for that. Because the examining team is asking how well the report, rather than the company, whether or not it's doing great. Okay, it's the report. As we can see there, we can further break these down and to benchmark against that. Uh, yes, we've got the variance, uh, but yes, you can separate that into the planning variance perhaps and operational variances perhaps and to include them how you separate them into the narrative part okay and also we are given the staff cost yeah staff cost is not a cost uh, into the revenue as a percentage we are not given that so we're not particularly sure that okay so reading back to the staff cost is increased a bit and not too much differences from there. It's okay there. It's quite stable, okay, from each and every year. So what's the point? For staff costs, as we can see there, how about the innovation? If you were to, um, I mean, to innovate your procurement and production method, especially for production method, perhaps an increase of the bonuses paid to your staff will be needed. However, we're not told about that. But uh, we're told about the staff absenteeism. Okay, it's the percentage of staff time lost through illness or absence. As you can see there, that the actual from last year was 4.1% this year, 4%. It seems that staff slightly motivated, perhaps, but we're not sure much about it, about whether or not the reduction of the staff absenteeism is because that they have uh, less time lost through illness or less time lost through absence. We're not sure about that. Okay, so uh, comment will be needed 
in a narrative. Okay, so uh, the next one, yes, the other operating cost means to break, the, break these costs down into different categories, sales and marketing, R&D, uh, and the irrecoverable debt, and, and, and so on. We're also given the finance cost, fine, and taxes, and group profit after tax. Uh, it seems to me that we are doing great, because year-on-year -year figure compared to last year, from 20x4 to 20x5, it's, an, it's been an increase of 7.4% there. But uh, what's the point? We're not particularly sure that, yes, comparing with the past is okay, but how about to compare with our competitor? We're not particularly sure about that. We also give another metric, okay, it's the return on capital employed, that it's very hard to measure the long-term shareholders' wealth, okay? I'll put a cost next to that. Because as you can say, the return capital employs the numerator return will be based on the accounting profit. So the accounting profit can be subject to be manipulated by management. At the same time, the profit itself would just be a short-term measure. But it's based on the uh, yearly financial statements result, okay, so to calculate that profit. Right, we got dividend paid. At least from my perspective, in order to measure the long-term wealth of the shareholders, why not disclose the dividend yield we're going to be taking that dividend payment, divide this into yield, which means the share price. Okay, so it simply takes the dividend per share and to divide this into the share price. And of course, why not include other measures such as the capital gain? Which means you use the share price from this year minus the share price from last year and divide this into the last year's share price. Of course, the dividend yields plus capital gain altogether, this would be the total shareholders return, or you can call it as the TSR. Why not include them in the report? You're not seeing that. Okay, now let's see the Save the Planet initiative. Right, so what would be the initiative? Let's read through the case. How about the Exhibit 3? At a recent board meeting, the retail director reported on two initiatives. Initiative, which means plans, within the shop operations. On the first initiative, it's called Chain Smiles. The director complains that the shop staff are not responding well to his attempt to encourage them to interact more often and more positively with customers. And of course, if this is the case there, if they're not smiling, okay, when they are facing customers, it may affect their revenue. And this is why they need a new initiative called Chain, Smile, uh, Chain Smiles Initiative. However, there's a more positive response to the second initiative called Save the Planet. All right. Which is his re reasoned drive to save electricity. It seems to me that demonstrating the ESG initiative or, or commitment by getting all shop staff to turn off unnecessary light and for shop managers to replace constantly running water heaters with new ones, which only heat water is required. All right, so you turn off unnecessary light, and this will certainly save the light and heat expenses. It's fine there. At the same time, you need to replace constantly running water heaters. Okay, it's like they, you keep 
investing money in that is like the asset replacement. However, the retail director noted that the replacement of water hitters was progressing slowly with some reluctance by shop managers to make the change. All right, so reluctance by shop managers. Seems to me that managers are not buying that decision at all. What's the point? I don't know. How about salary? Bonuses? They're not happy. The production director responded that he was not convinced by the retail director's initiative. Okay, now production director is not happy. Uh, so we've got the production side and also the retail side. Okay, production director is not happy. In fact, he wanted him to make sure that retail staff are explaining the quality of the ingredients sourced and the benefits of the new packaging to customers. Okay, so uh, we are thinking about why not to include this into our marketing campaign. Into our advertisement, this may increase the sales and marketing expenses perhaps, or at least the time that we need to spend uh, on this particular area. The production director is also particularly worried about the amount of products which has been thrown out because it's been uh, it's past its un, uh, past its usable date, and he wants this included into Save the Planet initiative. So it means that the amount of product, okay, just let's copy that, where not it's being included into Save the Planet initiative. Of course, the answer for that is no, because Save the Planet initiative, we are only told about the electricity costs, but we are not told about two things. For example, the amount thrown. At the same time, the replacement okay, of the asset are missing. We're told in the next paragraph that at present that all retail staff, including managers and retail director, are assessed by way of a general review of their work performed by their line manager. All right, and the line manager has to score the staff member on a one to five scale under two headings: sales and reliability. The retail director is assessed on these areas as well, but also has additional metrics of performance relating to the overall performance of the company, which are similar to the rest of the board. And the board scores the retail director's performance. It seems to me that's quite fine there. Okay. The CEO was at a recent business directors forum. The quote, what gets measured gets done, uh, was mentioned numerous times in a context of performance management. She wants you to explain how this might apply at the company given its current performance report and retail production directors issues. Of course, we will answer them in the part two later on in the next of our recording. Now, I've summarized all the things here, as you can see there on the screen, but the next step that you need to do from my perspective is to use a very standardized approach to answer when we are criticizing or evaluating the performance report. Now, this is quite consistent in each and every exam sitting. Now, in the part one there. So, the final part, I will be uh, bringing this into the CBE uh, environment. But let's write them down first. Eh? It's all about the performance report is evaluated. Now, firstly, we should evaluate it from the quantitative point of view, which means in terms of numbers. And secondly, we should evaluate it 
from the innovative point of view, which means in terms of words. Now, 10 marks, of course, we need to write 10 sentences for each sentence or each paragraph. I would suggest about um, at least 15 words, so 15 words to approximately 30 words into a single paragraph there, okay, in the APM exam. Now, when talking about the quantitative part in terms of numbers, it's very important that we need to touch whether or not that this is relevant to our objectives. That's the first part. And then we need to comment on how about the data, whether or not it's complete, and whether or not that would be appropriate. A very, very standardised uh, format, so we need to use each and every time from my perspective, although my answer will be completely different from the examiner's answer, but my answer, as you can see there, I've analysed the case, I've used the standardised format and we copy and combine these all together and you will score very high marks in the actual exam. And how about the presentation, the quality of presentation, uh, you can think about whether or not it link the financial data to the objective. If this is not the case, there's no point in, perform, uh, in, in writing me the report at all. And also we need to see, finally, the comparison. So not just with last year, but with the industry average in detail, and also with the, uh, with the competitor or benchmarking exercises from other companies of a similar function. For the narrative part, I would say that whether or not it's quite clear, okay, uh, so for example, whether or not you've written words, uh, some words to, to convey the message of how to, for example, the variances into uh, planning operational ones and so on. At the same time, whether or not there will be any other recommendations, okay, putting in to your report. Now, uh, you don't really have to explain the, what do I mean by objective. You don't really have to do that because uh, at this level, as a marker, uh, we are more interested in seeing that whether or not you are answering uh, the, the requirements and whether or not you are positioning yourself as a consultant, offering very valuable advice to the client. And this is what we are trying to assess in your answer. Now, I would say that whether or not it's relevant to the objective, that firstly, from the case information, that we have got the long-term shareholders' wealth, we have got quality, we have got innovation, okay, so these sort of things, and we have got the premium pricing, okay, is your objective from that. Um, yes, the objective, uh, that's it. Uh, but um, it seems to me that the objective sometimes is not very clear or clearly seen from the performance report because you can say that, okay, is what is currently in the report, okay, it's not very clearly seen from the report. Why? Because, okay, for long-term shareholders' wealth, yeah, I'll bring, that, bring them there. For long-term shareholders' wealth, we only have got the dividend payment, not TSR, total shareholder returns, the quality, no measures in place, innovation, no R&D and no such things and so on, premium pricing, no, yeah, we're not seeing that 
the price elasticity of demand and also breaking this down into price and volume, they're not seeing that. Right, so to comment on the data, whether or not they're complete and appropriate, I would say that Thursday, and yeah, pick up a few points to comment on. Yeah, we've got the growth year one year. We've got the growth Y O Y year one year. At the same time, we've got the profit into sales revenue. Okay. However, the growth year one year. I'd like to mention that case currently what would be a challenge is that no breakdown of our selling price and sales volume at all. At the same time, no expenses into sales revenue at all. That would be a Problem there. Uh, yes, I've mentioned that uh, there will be no other metric. Uh, it's entirely up to you that you include that into the objective headings in your answer. Alternatively, you can include them into the second part. Okay, so it's not quite appropriate, it's not quite complete at all. Okay, you can tell the examiner about that. Now, how about presentation quality? Have you linked your financial data to objective? I would say that you can comment on it's a poor presentation. Uh, because there'll be no links between financial data and objectives in some cases. And of course, I've mentioned about uh, the long-term shareholders wealth, quality innovation and premium pricing. So in terms of other areas, the, how about the effectiveness of our sales and marketing? Yes. Uh, so, for example, the effectiveness of sales and marketing, there's no breakdown from the operating costs from there. So whether or not we can uh, further expand our business, the market expansion is questionable, of course. Uh, at the same time, I would say that giving me the variances, it seems to be everything is quite well, but the variances, for example, no separation, into the con uh, uncontrollable, which means the planning variances, and the controllable ones, operational variances, at all. Or at least, from my perspective, why not to benchmark against the best in the industry, and something like that. You can always comment on that. Comparison, yeah, you can say about the good thing. Yes, we've got the year one year, Comparison, which means compare with the previous year's figures, it's okay. However, what is not okay is that you only compare with the industry average, but not to benchmark uh, against the uh, best in the industry. Okay. Now, of course, you can always think about when you're benchmarking things, you can think about 
the competitors, the best one in the market, or the best function in the industry. The best function in terms of, for example, procurement, or be your detail costs. of your procurement exercises, the innovation will be your detail costs in terms of your R&D. Okay. You can always think about them in the actual exam there for a comparison of stuff. Finally, for the narrative part, okay, so whether or not you think that's quite clear, I would say that not clear enough because there will be no mention or no narrative about the challenges and your strategic responses at all. Your recommendation, so for example, you can bring a lot of stuff in there, so for example, uh, the things that I've mentioned, I don't want to copy that or duplicate that in, 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 the, in the exam. However, I will also say to the examining team that regarding the Save the Planet initiative, okay, so it includes metrics or KPIs for Save the Planet initiative, in terms of the amount thrown, the product, at the same time, the replacement of your asset, okay, the cost that you spend in each and every time, okay, to replace the hitters and something like that. Yes, yeah, so you can uh, tell the examiner about those and yes, making sure that you follow the, the ways like this and it will certainly make your answer look more professional each and every time. Right there, okay, so I'm going to be stopping the recording now because this is not the first time that uh, this requirement is tested. It's commonly tested nowadays in the APM exam. So make sure, get a format right and make sure that you read the requirements right, read every sentence, and to apply them in your answer. And you will see how marvellous that could be to improve the number of marks that you can get in your answer. I'm going to be stopping the recording now, and I look forward to seeing you in the next one when we come to part two, what gets measured gets done. Bye-bye. A, P, C, accounting for your future.